Your problem isn't as big as you think it is. Just give it to God and He'll work it out for your good. What does it actually look like to let go of our fears and turn them over to God? Fear can be a friend, not your enemy. Ray, I, I, I think of the word that people use to describe you when I tell them that we're friends, they think of your open air preaching. They see you talking to people on the streets, talking about heaven and hell and the 10 commandments and the day of judgment and people get upset with you and, and uh, women even punch you. And they say, the word to describe Ray Comfort is fearless. He has no fear. He is bold as a lion. He goes out there and it seems like the, nothing scares him. And yet I know that you have a special recipe for overcoming fear. And, and that's what I wanna talk with you about today. There's so many people who say, I'd love to be able to do what Ray does. I mean, he's, he's just unique. He must be specially gifted in fearlessness. Is it possible when we're living in a, in a culture that is so antagonistic toward the Christian message to actually be rid of all fear? No, no, I've got fear all the time. I'm terrified right now talking to you as to what's gonna come out of your mouth next. But when it comes to sharing the gospel, I'm always fearful. Just yesterday, there was a man came round home to fix our TV, it was playing up. We weren't getting the channels or something wrong with the dish. And while he was standing there waiting for it to load up, you know how they do, I thought I got a witness to this guy and I, I was nervous. And I just said to him, George, that was his name, do you think there's an afterlife? And away we went. He says, I don't know. The Great Commission is a reproach on human nature. It shows how wicked and selfish we are, that Jesus would have to say, go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. That's like saying to a doctor, you've found a cure to cancer, I command you to take that to dying patients. He shouldn't have to be commanded. He should run with every ounce of energy that he's got if he cares mm. about people that are dying. And you and I in Christ have everlasting life. Mm. We must run with joy to sinners and say, you can find everlasting life through faith in Jesus. And, yeah. and Kirk, there is a very powerful analogy I use based on, on scripture, done as an analogy. I just say to people, do you know what death is? I've got a skeptic in front of me who's not concerned about his salvation. He says, no, I don't know. Says, Let me tell you what the Bible says death is. It's wages. Did you know that? And they always say, wages? I say, yeah, it's wages. God is paying you in death for your sins. The scriptures say the wages of sin is death. It's like a judge says to a criminal that's murdered multiple women, he's not concerned and the judge says, I'm gonna show you how serious this is. I'm paying you in the death sentence. This is your wages. This is what you've earned. This is what's due to you. And I say, sin is so serious to holy God, he's given you the death sentence. You're on death row and your death will be evidence to you that God is deadly serious about sin. Mm. And their mouth opens wide. And I say, did you know the message of the Bible? They say, I've never read it. The Old Testament, God promised to destroy death and the New Testament tells us how he did it. And they go, I didn't know oh, that. What's that all about? Yeah, so and it stirs curiosity. You know, you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make him drink is a lie. You can make a horse drink, all you do is salt his oats. And you can salt the oats of any human being because they're not an animal. They're not a dog or a horse or a cat. God has placed eternity on their heart and if you talk about everlasting life and freedom from the fear of death and the power of death, it's gonna give their interest even if they're an atheist, agnostic, whatever, they're gonna set up and say, I didn't know the Bible says you can be free from the power of death, that God's granted everlasting life. And I say, have you heard the gospel? They say, no, I don't even know what the gospel is. I say, it's the good news that Jesus Christ has abolished death and brought life and immortality to light through the gospel. Mm. I said, let me share the gospel with you and get your thoughts. And I say, I'm gonna back up. We're gonna have the bad news, gonna have to look at the bad news before we look at the good news. Right, right. Because if you've got a doctor who's a good doctor, won't tell a patient he's got a cure until he first tells him he's got the disease. And a good doctor will say, I'm gonna hold off on giving this cure. I'm gonna show you these x-rays. See this poison seeping through your system? You're gonna be dead in two weeks. And when he sees sweat come to the brow, he says he's now ready to hear the good news because he's scared. And that fear is his friend, it's not his enemy. A fear will make you put on a, a parachute if you're gonna jump. Fear will make you put on a seatbelt. Fear can be a friend, not your enemy, if it's a good fear. And the Bible says, through the fear of the Lord, men depart from evil. So it's good to make people sweat because sin is deadly serious. Yeah. And we're talking about the eternity of heaven and hell. And then you're sharing with them the cure to the, the sin cure. problem, which it's, is the gospel. Yeah. Ray, um, you shared with me in private conversations that you actually struggle with something called agoraphobia. Mm -hmm. uh, 
And that is an incredible fear of being in crowds, being in public places. How is that possible? You're an open air preacher. Yes. And there are people who are listening right now. What helped you get over this incredible sense of anxiety and fear about being around people to become an evangelist like Well, you? I had it when I was an evangelist. I got it 30 years ago. It was over one afternoon, suddenly I felt like a thousand demons just invaded my mind. Mm. I flung myself on the ground. I tried to exercise prayer myself and it was just horrific. And for a year, I couldn't have a meal with my family. It was so debilitating. But there are certain keys. There are certain practical things you can do. You can breathe in deeply when you get a panic attack because the problem is when you have an attack, you're... Um, you're being starved of oxygen in your blood that's going through your brain, which makes you sweat, makes you more fearful and want to run. It's called flight or fight. So what you do is do just deep breathing exercises. You stop, you calm yourself, and you breathe through your nostrils very, very deeply, four or five times, as deep as you can. That will actually help calm you. That's practical things you can do. Spiritual, you say, Lord, all things are working together for my good because I love you and caught according to your purposes. This is for my good and I'm going to rejoice in this. And the thing that kept me alive, Kirk, was one word from the book of Hebrews. Afterwards, when it speaks of chastening, it brings forth a peaceable fruit of righteousness. I got that word afterwards and wrote it in big letters and marker and put it on a door where I'd see it regularly to know that there was an end. It's going to be light at the end of the tunnel. There's not a train heading for me. It's going to be an afterwards for this thing. And in the meantime, God will work it out for your good. So that mm. helps you lift yourself up. And also, so that you don't get caught up in self-pity, think of a burn victim that's burned over 90% of the body. They don't even look like they used to yesterday. They're the ones that have got the big problem. Your problem isn't as big as you think it is. Just give it to God and he'll work it out for your mm. good. What does it actually look like to let go of our fears and turn them over to God? Well, it's going to be a continual thing because the fear keeps coming back, but it just means to trust Him. Trust Him as you trust a father as a little kid. You take Him by the hand and He'll lead you. So every time I go out to share my faith, I know that God is with me. He said, I'll never leave you nor forsake mm. you. So it's a continual trusting in the integrity of God. Everything we rest on as Christians is on one Bible verse, and that is, it is impossible for God to lie. Everyone else will let you down. You know, your friends, even your dad can let you down. Sometimes they can't keep their word because of circumstances, but God will never, ever let you down. That means you can trust Him in everything you put your hand to, especially when it comes to reaching out to the lost. Mm. Many times I've sat back and thought, I didn't know that. How did I know that? I didn't, I, I'm not eloquent, how could I speak like that? And I, I just have to come back and rest in the fact that God helps me and he'll help anyone who trusts him. Mm.